Welcome. To I like to. Alright, are we on? <laughs> Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to figure out how and where and when and so <laughs> forth. <laughs> Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to figure out where the first minimum will occur in a diffraction pattern. So we know it's going to be some distance away from the central maximum. The central maximum, of course, directly across where the opening is. Let's say the width of the opening is A. And here I've drawn a little bit of picture of what's going on in there. But basically, we, when the diffraction, of course, causes the light to go in all different directions, and when we look at different positions on the screen, we're going to see a diffraction pattern. The diffraction pattern will look something like this. So we'll go down to minimum, and then it'll taper off like that. So the diffraction pattern will kind of look like this. So you have your central maximum, then you have your first minimum, then you have your first maximum away from the central maximum, your second minimum, and so forth. So where is the location of that first minimum right there? So let's label it first minimum. Oop. First minimum. All right. The key again with diffraction patterns is that we look for the point in the beam where we can find that the extra distance traveled here will be exactly a half a wavelength. So if this portion of the beam cancels out this portion of the beam, then the first half cancels out the second half, none of the light will then get through, so to speak, because there will be destructive interference, and we'll see a dark spot here, which is called our first minimum. All right, so the conditions for that to be true, we need, we need the extra distance to be equal to a half a wavelength. And of course, we're talking about the extra distance at the halfway point in the beam. That means that the extra distance must be A over 2 times the sine of theta. So it's half the beam width times the sine of theta gives us this distance right here, which is the extra distance traveled by this wave right here compared to this wave. So you can see that the first half of the beam counts out the second half of the beam, and we'll get destructive interference over there. So that's the conditions. And since the extra distance equals this, we can then say that A over 2 times the sine theta must equal lambda over 2. That is the condition to, get to have our first minimum, which means that A times the sine of theta equals lambda under those conditions. Now, these are usually very small angles, and so with small angles we can say that therefore a tangent of theta is equal to lambda over 2, and of course the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Opposite side would be y, adjacent side we call it l is the distance to the screen, so we can write that a times y over l equals, oh, let's see here, I shouldn't have lambda divided by 2 because I multiply both sides by 2, so this is simply lambda, not lambda divided by 2, I magically just put the 2 back, shouldn't do that, so a times y over l equals lambda, which means that y is equal to the wavelength of the light times the distance to the screen divided by the width of the slit, and that's how we find the first minimum. The first minimum is found under those conditions. All right, we're not going to put that equation down there yet. We're going to come up with a more general equation, but you'll see that we'll then calculate the equation to the first maximum, the second minimum, second maximum, so forth, and you'll see how we can get that done. And that's for the next video. <laughs>